Welcome back to Afternoon Tea. Now here with me in the studio we have Solomon Wesley Sua. He will be continuing his ethical hacking series or legal hacking series with us with his third episode which is the defenses meshes for the cyber kill chain. Thank you so much Solomon for joining us this afternoon. Uh, thank you uh, Cinema for uh, the first for the 2022. 20 uh, good to be back, and uh, yes, as you said, uh, I'll continue with my uh, ethical hacking series, and uh, ethical, as you said, is legal, so, uh, and then we see how the, uh, the same hacking or ethical, ethical hacking, it is the same principles, tools, and techniques applied, but it is, depends on which side of the, uh, the whole uh, spectrum someone sits at, so one can be a bad hacker, and one can be a uh, good hacker or ethical hacker, but the skill sets are the same, so. Uh, last time we spoke on uh, the seven steps of uh, cyber kill chain. So today we will see how uh, we can have the defenses and countermeasures in, so we can defend our systems against the uh, cyber attacks and uh, other breaches that were happening, uh, happening uh, quite often these days. So. so before we get into today's uh, topic, uh, let's just recap on the cyber kill chain. Like, how many steps are there for the cyber kill chain? Uh, thank you. The uh, there are basically uh, seven steps, seven, uh, seven steps that we the the hackers normally take. So we call this a uh, cyber kill chain. So there are actually seven. The first one is the reconnaissance. That's where they get all the information and see uh, what are the email addresses they're using, what are the internal computer servers they're using, what are the domain names and all that. So they use uh, tech tools and techniques to get all those, so that's what we call a uh, uh, reconnaissance. And then the second phase is uh, the uh, weapon assessing stage where as soon as they get uh, uh, all information like email addresses, they know what uh, emails they're using, servers, they have what uh, operating systems, either they have Windows or Linux or all these different. Once they all have information, then they go into the second phase, which they do the weapon assessing. It's like building an electronic bomb that they want to send it to a a person so as soon as they have that uh, weapon assistant then the step three is that they do what they call a delivery so they have to find a way that how can i deliver this uh, bomb or electronic bomb or uh, one example would be a malware or a virus or ransomware they would try and uh, send it through a network or a gap that they already identified in uh, step number one so they come from reconnaissance to weaponization to delivery. As soon as they deliver the, uh, the virus or the payload, we call it, what happened is that then they went in and they do the exploitation. They exploit the uh, vulnerabilities that are already existing. So it's like somebody putting in a bomb and blow up a brick wall. So once they blow up that up, then now they, have, uh, they come through the reconnaissance to weaponization to delivery, and then now they exploit the, the loophole or the loophole in the system. So now they come in and that is what they call uh, exploitation. As soon as they exploit the thing, then they come in and do the installation. So they actually install that malware in the system, for instance. So once they have installed that, then they go to the number six stage, which, which is they call it the command and control. So now they take control of the system. You would think that you are using your computer, but someone else is already coming in and they do a command and control. So in that stage, they put a back door. So anytime they want to come back in and get a file, they would come in. So, And then that's the number six. And the final st uh, stage is they call the action on the objectives, whatever the objective is. Now that they have full access to the entire system, now they can do the, ex uh, do the actual attack. So when we have ransom attacks like, uh, let's say, finance or others that we on the news, that is the last stage of the cyber kill chain. So now they are carrying out the action. So they might lock your files and say, we want some money, like the case for finance. Uh, so these are the seven stages that they come from reconnaissance to weaponization to uh, delivery to exploitation, installation. They take control of the system on the number six stage, which is uh, command and control. And uh, number seven is uh, they do the whatever they want to do. Okay. So these are the, the basic or the seven steps that uh, ethical actors or the bad actors they follow to do carry out the exercises. All right. So um, I know you are more interested in uh, the corporate level um, because I mean, for us Papua New Guineans, individuals have not really uh, gone through. Mm -hmm. Maybe they've gone through uh, people hacking their files, but we've only had in, on the news uh, for 
um, our departments yes, and corporate, yes. yes. So can you tell us more about it at the corporate level? Um, at the, yes, the, thank you. The, I'm, I'm more interested in the, uh, the corporate level because that's where, let's say, the, at the corporate level because that's where the, the cream or the critical infrastructures of our country are at the corporate level. So let's look at some of our, we call it the critical infrastructures like uh, PNG Power, Adoranu, uh, Water PNG or now the Water PNG Adoranu, and then we have uh, PNG Power and all these other critical, uh, like our airports, our wharfs, uh, A New Guinea, all these other state and enterprises, they are all our critical in, in, uh, infrastructure because the, our economy runs on this. So if there's a power outage, then all business comes to a stop. If there's an attack on our airports, then uh, there's no transportation. So these are the critical infrastructure that I'm particularly interested in. And uh, I want to talk about not at an individual level, but uh, like Internet Safe Week, and I understand the media attended the Internet uh, Safe Week as well. But my uh, interesting uh, area is uh, on uh, how we can defend our critical infrastructures against cyber attacks. So our economy must be protected at all levels. So it can be Department of uh, Finance, it can be Department of uh, Treasury or National Planning or uh, with elections around uh, PNG Electoral Commission. So all these departments, they run the critical infrastructures for our country. So we have to defend them at all levels. Now that we're living in a time and age where cyber attacks are happening right in our uh, doorsteps and finance because the media is aware of that so they publish it. Some are uh, I know of some, I cannot disclose, but some are suffering and they are hiding their suffering. They don't want the media to know. So a lot of them are affected now. So uh, finance is the one that came out public, but we need to protect that. So that's where I am uh, particularly interested in. So that brings us to our topic for today, the defensive measures for the cyber kill chain. Um, from what I know and what you've told me before the interview, um, uh, there are three steps that you want to talk about. So could you just go with us on the steps for the defensive measures? Uh, thank you, yes. Uh, we have to defend our, uh, we have to set up uh, defensive mechanisms, or we call it the countermeasures, on every step along the uh, way within the, the cyber kill chain's uh, seven steps. Uh, but like reconnaissance, even if somebody's doing a recon or it's like in information gathering, we wouldn't know until something uh, went off and then all that we use. Uh, we might know that oh, someone is doing something, but on the I will talk about these three basic uh, security countermeasures that applies to all the our corporate organizations, even private organizations too, like our banks, like BSP and other banks, uh, even the central bank. So what they have to do is that there are three principles in security that I want to talk about uh, this afternoon. First one is that we call it the zero trust. You don't trust anybody in, in, when it comes to uh, IT security. You don't trust anybody in security because zero trust is like you give uh, even the CEO or even the chairman of an organization or even a uh, uh, high team manager, uh, there must be check and balances that we must not trust anybody within the uh, network. Even if uh, like a disgruntled employee leaving and you might do something bad. so. When it comes to security, you don't trust anybody in security. That's number one. Number two is uh, we call it the principle of uh, least uh, privilege. So princi principle of least privilege is that you give the right access to the right person to do his or her job. So that's uh, zero trust, uh, uh, principle of least uh, uh, security uh, privileges. And uh, uh, the number three is uh, network uh, separation and segmentation. So if you have a bigger network, you have to segment them and you segregate them. So even if there's an attack, when they come to the first layer, then they must not uh, uh, get all of the entire network. So you segment them and then you, uh, you do segregation of all the networks. So uh, internet-facing websites, you can have them in what we call uh, DMZs or demilitarized zones. And other servers, you can hide them behind. So all IT departments, like if a CEO is watching or anybody watching, they must make sure that their IT departments must run what we call uh, uh, network segregation and uh, net, uh, uh, decentralized uh, networks. So you don't centralize everything in one. 
if there's a attacker comes in, then he can get all of some files, but not everything. So that's where you segregate and you segment the network. So these are the three basic uh, at the corporate level that all IT departments and all the, our government departments must have this uh, in place. So, and then the normal things like you have antiviruses. Uh, there must not be any Windows 7 floating around in any network. Uh, there must not be any server 2008. These are obsolete or they are phased out. There is no more security coming in. So if uh, you are a company CEO watching and are a chairman of any of these SOEs, if there is a operating system in Windows 7 or 2008 running around, then there's a loophole. These bad guys will come in. So uh, they must, all the client machines or the ones, the desktops and all that, uh, upgrade them to Windows 11. So if you have Windows 10 around, then there's a free upgrade option available. So get your ITs to upgrade all of them to Windows 11. And the server 2000 and all that must go. Uh, the latest servers, they must invest. So they must take control of these uh, smaller things. Otherwise, if you leave them open, then like finance, at the end of the day, you might spend like 15 million we saw on the paper. Or it could be more than that. So the basic things must be in security hygiene and all this must be in. Plus this three... Uh, zero trust and the uh, principle of least uh, privilege and network uh, segmentation and segregation must be in place. So thank you, Solomon, for today's topic um, on the defensive measures of the cyber kill chain. Now, before we wrap up, um, this month is the internet, I mean, the safer internet month for uh, the world, and PNG, we are part of uh, this. Um, could you tell us more about why this month safety awareness month is on uh, basically the safer internet uh, month is like cyber security is something very new uh, even uh, in png context our internet uh, internet penetration rate could be probably i don't know less than 10 percent or something like not all our people are on the internet but when they first get in the internet they uh, totally forgot about the safety measures so they would like if they create a um, Facebook account that they want to put up all the information, where they come from, where they went to school, what is their puppy's name, all of that. So, And then uh, when it comes to the Gmail account, they don't want to forget their password. So the same puppy's name, they might use it on the password. So if somebody knows that it's, a puppy name is like this and then the account is there, they might do the hacking, use the social engineering stuff to do hacking. So safety week is all about making awareness that you must do what is right at the right place at the right time. And cyber IG, you know, like you go into a house and you see there's things all over the place. You want to put them in the proper places and do hygiene checks and all this. So cyber safety, internet safety week is part of this whole uh, ethical hacking stuff that you have to know what you're going in and you have to share what information you're sa uh, sharing with others. So uh, child exploitation and all this money laundering and uh, so many of these like AIM Global or some Bitcoin stuff, all these are floating around us. So all this week is then uh, you check out the um, ICT department's website. They are good resources that they're putting out. I had a look at their website and they're putting out good stuff. So Internet Safety Week is all about safer internet browsing. So when you browse the internet and you make sure that you don't give out, export so much information out. If some stranger asking you for uh, your password or some other stuff, then you don't give, ex uh, you don't expose your uh, digital identity fully to others. So that's kind of, it's like a safety week. So they want to make sure that you are browsing the internet safely and not exposing uh, your digital identity too much to other people that you don't really trust. So it's about all about safety. You do the right thing, click the right buttons and do the right thing when you are out there saving the internet. All right, thank you so much, Solomon. And we look forward for next week's topic. Um, you will give us the topic. But thank you so much for being with us today. Uh, it is uh, my uh, pleasure to be back on the uh, back on the show. And um, in the next uh, uh, our next topic, um, I'll try and uh, now break down into the seven uh, uh, the steps that these bad guys normally come in. We will try and break down into other layman's stem that people would understand how these guys come in, and then both individuals and corporates can uh, defend their networks at those uh, seven levels so the next um, topic we'll try and uh, go through the fa uh, the first um, phase of the cyber kills and which is uh, reconnaissance so how we how they get that information what tools they're using and all that we'll try and go through briefly on some of the tools and techniques they use and then uh, that and then we follow the other episodes with other steps down the line but first uh, next uh, tuesday we might 
uh, we will go through the first uh, phase of uh, cyber kills and that's uh, reconnaissance. Thank you so much. So long.